Happy New Year, everyone. I'm back, I'm hyped, my wrist works again, and I've got some big plans for this area down here. So last episode, I built this power station over here, which once we get it fed with blaze cakes, is going to produce over a million SU, and that should, hopefully, cover the whole area. And I also built a signal in station here, which I have added a few more windows into, but I, I actually need a bit more glass. Oh, jeez, the train's moving. But yeah, I need to get a bit more glass to finish that off. But it did occur to me that they can't really use it to see over the track if there's no windows there for them to actually be able to see. But today, we're going to move outside the convoy of this circular rail and build our first processing plants. So I'm getting through a lot of building materials over here and for future projects I'm gonna need lots of certain things. So it's about time we automated the production of more stuff. Starting with sand. Now we're already producing sand of course in a big old factory on the other side of the world but I want to create all the things we get from sand. Primarily glass, sandstone, quartz and terracotta. As a side product, we'll also get a little bit of gold, which is nice, but that's not the priority. I also need to start thinking about the layout of this town in regards to roads and things like that and where all the other buildings are going to go. And also as they pull in and we manage to catch them, there's a couple of trains we still need to name as well from a couple of episodes ago, so we'll get on that. Basically, it's going to be a pretty busy day. Now, first things first, I think we're going to need a great big building to be able to start processing stuff. We'll put the sand stuff in it for now, and if there's space, we may add some more stuff later. Question is, where do we put it? I mean, I could put it over here somewhere. I still don't really know what to do about the mansion. I don't think it's going to fit in with the style of this place. So I may have to tear it down, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I like the location and I have ideas of what I want to put over there. I just don't think that building is going to be suitable, but that's for another episode. But now what I should probably do is mark out where a few of the roads are going to go and figure out where to put this building. Maybe over there somewhere. Who knows? Let's grab some blocks and mark some stuff out. Oh, there's one of the trains. So this one's the liquid lava train. We've had amazing suggestions. In fact, we've had absolutely hundreds of suggestions for naming the two trains we still need to. And the name we're going with was suggested by Kyle Der Hood, and that is the Liquimotive, which I think just works really well. So you can be on your way, and thank you very much, Kyle, for the suggestion. Right, now let's plan out some boundaries around here. Well, I've made a right mess of that, but hopefully that helps give a bit of an idea of what I'm thinking. We're going to have a road that runs around the outside of this rail on this side here. We'll have an entrance here, which is going to go in and come out again over this way. So we've just got sort of a loop. Pretend that bit there doesn't exist. And then it's also going to connect, go across the rail and connect up out that way as well. So I think that should work. And then we're going to stick a big old building today over this area here. But before I can do that, I need to go do some resource gathering. I should be able to scavenge a whole bunch of it from storage, but I have a feeling we're also going to need to craft some things and do a little bit of mining too. Because although I don't know what the building is going to look like, I do know what I want to use to build it out of. Cue the resource gathering montage. to get started so let's build a factory and i guess i'm just gonna place the first block here and see how we go
Well, I've had a lot of fun with this build, but I think it's finally done. At least from the outside, and that's looking pretty cool, I think. It did actually look a little bit like a school at first, so I added this bit on top, and it definitely looks more like a factory. And you may have noticed during that build as well, we were using these brand new catwalks, which we didn't have access to before, and these are actually from the Create Deco mod. It looks like I've missed a railing there. But Create Deco is now available for 120 on Forge, so I figured I should probably add it in, because it just adds a few more detaily bits we can use like this, as well as some other bits and bobs like like shipping containers and train holes and so on. But personally, I don't really like the train holes for actual use on trains. They're too round for my liking. So don't expect to see any of those on trains, but I'm sure we'll use them elsewhere. But the best news is this building is absolutely huge. This is just the ground floor here. And of course, we've got extra space upstairs, which I don't really know how we're going to access or what we're going to do with it, really, because I think we're actually going to start down the bottom here. Or are we? Because maybe I should build a cobble generator first and just sort of jam it in one of these towers up here. Because because although we're bringing over loads of stuff from the savannah, I don't think it's going to be coming over quickly enough for me to actually be able to use it effectively in a whole factory. So we should probably start with its own source of cobble, which we'll just convert straight into sand, and then that should give us all we need to run this factory. But in order to do any of this, I need to head back to storage. We need to basically grab lots and lots of stuff we need for create. And I think it's about time I do something I've been meaning to do in regards to that for a very long time. And that is to sort out this mess. So this is my wall of create items, and there's a few few problems. One, it's not big enough, so I've had to stash some in barrels over here as well. There's some items such as funnels and display links that you just can't put in drawers anyway, but mostly it's just a bit of a hassle. Every time I want something, I'm having to come all the way back here, grab individual items from Create and so on, and I think there's a better way. And that better way is going to involve this, another backpack. And instead of storing all of the Create items in drawers like this, what I'm going to do instead is just store them in a backpack, because that way every time I need anything, I can just come over here, grab the backpack, and go. And I think that's going to work out much better for me. But before we can do that, we need to do some upgrades, because this is just an iron backpack. We want to get this all the way up to netherite, and we want to stick lots of upgrades on like we've got here, so that we can stack lots of things and craft things in the bag and so on. So let's quickly get that sorted out first. And already there's a problem, because I don't really have enough gold to do the upgrades. And I'm probably going to need more diamonds as well. Not a problem, just means we need a quick mine mining session before we can get started. And if you're wondering whether that means I'm going to play that same funky mining song again, yes. The answer is yes. Now let's get this backpack upgraded. Sadly, I don't have enough excess netherite to be able to do this to a netherite backpack at the moment, but we've managed to get some upgrades on it and it should be good enough for now. I just need to load it up. My plan here is just to grab all of the create stuff we've got in these boxes. That is one pretty full backpack. So with our handy new create backpack, I think I'm ready to create a cobble generator. So let's open up a hole up here first and get into this tower. And there should be more than enough space. We don't need a huge cobble generator. We just need one that's going to be able to feed this factory. Although thinking about it, we should probably get some power over here first. That's going to be helpful, isn't it? I think if we bring it into the corner of this tower here, that should work quite nicely. Oh, we've already got a hole underneath here. Right, there we go. We now have power in the building. Excellent stuff. Let's just route this up to the cobble generator room. All right, good stuff. Now, let's make a generator. And that should just about do it. We'll waterlog the drills. We'll get some lava on top. And that should all feed directly into these drawers. So if I just bring these drawers down the wall here... If we put a spruce drawer and a drawer controller there as well, that would just make sure that it's all going to work. So if we quickly grab ourselves some water, and we'll chuck some lava on top. And now we should be generating loads of cobble. And we'll just set up a redstone link here as well, just to make sure that this turns off when it gets more full. Okay, and that's coming in nice and quickly. Excellent. Now we've got the cobble coming in, I need to turn it into sand. But before we do that, I'm going to think about the infrastructure a little bit, because all the things we make in this factory are going to need to be collected and taken over to these storage warehouses over there. And that means we're going to need collection points. And I'm thinking maybe if we have them in either side of the walls, we can have sort of vaults that start on the inside, they go to the outside. That might be the best way to do it. So if we were to just line up a bunch of vaults over here and then just have them sticking out on this side, like this. Let's give them a little bit of support underneath for now. I think that'll work quite nicely. And we'll just do the same thing on this side over here and maybe put down another torch or two. We seem to have a zombie problem. And now they're in. That gives us some targets to aim for, I guess. So the first thing we need to do is to convert this cobble down into sand. And for that, we're going to need to basically convert it to gravel, then to sand. And during that process, we're also going to end up getting flint and clay. 
which I'm sure we can make some use of. And I think it makes sense to actually have that happen in the middle of the room. So we're probably going to move this bit here and just have it sort of go across the ceiling here. Because that way we can have a vault for sand, which we send off in one direction for processing. And we can have other vaults for the clay and the flint. I did not mean to punch a hole in my floor. And I think that's just going to help us process things a little bit easier. So let's just chuck a couple of vaults in the middle of the room here. And what we'll do is just work backwards from the vaults. So we need some belts and some shafts. And let's just see what we can rig up in here. And I think this should just about do it. So we're pulling the cobble out from over there. We're turning that into gravel and then sand. That's giving us flint and clay, which go into the respective vaults here. And all the sand goes over to there. But that's not really going to give us too much clay. So what we're also doing is taking sand out of here, washing it and turning it into more clay. Because that way we can make terracotta and bricks over here as well. I've also linked things up so when the clay vaults fall, this will all stop. And then when the sand vaults fall, this will all stop. And with the flint one here, I've actually just got a drawer down here with a void upgrade on it. And that will just void all the excess flint. Because this thing produces quite a lot of it and we're not really doing anything with it yet. Although I'm sure we will in future. Gotta get andesite somehow, I guess. I've also added a great big display board at the back here so we can keep count of exactly what we've got, which is good. But now we need to start processing the rest of the things. So we're going to start on the sand side, I think. And from here, we're going to be able to get glass. We'll also get soul sand, which means we can get quartz and gold. And of course, we'll be able to get sandstone and smooth sandstone as well. The first one of those we're going to do is glass. That should be fairly straightforward. We just need to smelt it. And a few minutes later, I've got that sorted. So this arm here just takes the sand off this depot puts it there and it gets cooked into glass and then this arm here takes it once it's cooked puts it in this funnel and then it gets shipped off into this container over here and once again this is all linked up to turn off when it reaches 75 percent full and we can also keep account of how much we've got over there but now the glass is done i think we're going to work on sandstone and smooth sandstone and we'll get those going into these two vaults over here so to do that we need to compact sand first and then we need to split it into two rows some of which will get cooked and some of which will just go straight into a vault so this should be quite a simple one. And a short while later, I think we've got this one sorted too. So the sand comes out of here. It then gets compacted into sandstone. At the top here, I've got this on forced round robin. So we actually get an even amount of both. And it does mean that when things are cooking over here, it kind of slows everything down and backs it up. But that's absolutely fine. We don't need it to be fast. We just don't want to end up with loads of sandstone and very little smooth sandstone. That's not going to be helpful. We're more likely to use the smooth. So at least this way, we should get an even amount of both. But with that done, we can now focus on making soul sand which will also give us quartz and gold. And that will fill up the last three vaults on this side, I guess. And then we can start messing around with the clay. So to make soul sand, what we need to do is haunt sand. So we need one of these fans. We need some soul campfires or something. And then we need to do stuff to that. Or I think it's washing it, maybe, to then get the quartz and the gold. So this is going to be a little bit bigger than the ones we've made so far. But as long as I can keep some kind of a walkway going around the bottom here, we've got plenty of space on this side we can use anyhow. And I think this should work. I believe I've got it all set up correctly. Correctly, so sand gets haunted, soul sand gets stored and sent this way, gets washed, and then we have quartz going that way, gold going that way. I've also got the link set up so only when the gold is full will it actually turn everything off. Until then, it's just going to keep producing. And this box here has a void upgrade on it. So, well, basically, we're going to end up with a lot more quartz than we are gold. But this just means its main purpose will, of course, be a gold farm. Once that's full, it'll turn everything off. But by then, we'll have full quartz and we'll also have full soul sand. And thankfully, it shouldn't back up up because even once this vault is full although it'll back up on this a little bit here it's still going to be able to feed around and get washed and so on at least that's the hope but i guess there's only one way to test this thing so let's get this funnel on here and see what happens oh it would help if i had that funnel the right way around wouldn't it i also need to sort this bit out here because i didn't put a proper filter on it Jeez. okay i think it's all working. So we're getting our gold nuggets, our quartz, and our soul sand, as well as our glass, our sandstone, and our smooth sandstone. Excellent stuff. So that's the sand side of the processing plant complete. And to be honest, I think it's looking pretty cool as well. We could have made it a bit more efficient. We could have used less belts and things like that. But I think it looks cooler like this. And currently, it's not messing with my frames too much. So hopefully, we can leave it like this. But we'll see. What I need to do now is to start processing this side. So the clay, that's the main thing. And from clay, we're going to be able to get bricks, brick blocks, terracotta, red sand. I think we can get from clay as well. As well as just clay blocks, of course. But we've got a much smaller surface area to work with here when it comes to taking stuff out. So I think we're going to have to take it out and then split it into the different tracks for the different types of processing we need to do. So if we do a setup 
up something like this and do forced split. That's going to give us three rows to work with. And I think that should be enough. And first off, I think we're going to deal with bricks, which means I need to fire things as a first step. But this doesn't necessarily need to be a fast process, so maybe we should just use some mechanical arms here. And then once they're fired, we want to send them up. Well, I think what I'm going to do to save a bit of space is just move all this over. We're going to need two mechanical arms here. We're going to need one to take stuff from there and put it onto there. And we're going to need another one to take it from there and put it in there once it's cooked. Let's just make sure that the lava is going to be encased nicely in there. There we go. That should be fine. Okay, so once we've got bricks, we need to take them up to here. And then we need to split them into two channels. One of which will come over here and deposit stuff. And the other one needs to go this way and then this way. So let's get these belts in. We'll need a tunnel there to split it out. Then we need a basin with a mechanical press over here so that we can turn everything into brick blocks. And I think that means everything's powered. I've just realized I don't think I need this arm because the belt's going to feed things onto there. I just need this one to take them off and put them in the barrel. So these belts always running is fine, but this one here, we're going to need to make sure we put a clutch on because we want to be able to turn this off once the bricks and that are full. So let's stick one of them in there and get this one hooked up to the power as well. So back on the ground we go. So that should do the trick. And everything seems to be going the right way, which is nice. So because this belt isn't running, that should mean these ones just stop. So let's just give this a go. If we activate that, we should see stuff. Uh, oh, oh, dang. Right, uh, okay, this is this has all gone wrong. So what I've forgotten to do is to put all the filters on. So let's just quickly cook up some brick down here. And yeah, then we can actually apply the filters and get this thing working properly. Right, so let's put a brick filter on there. That should solve those problems. And then let's put this belt back in. So now it should work. As soon as that first stash of bricks is cooked down there, they should get put into there and then split up. And yeah, we should end up with some blocks and some bricks. There we go. So we're getting bricks over there and we're getting bricks down here. Perfect. Now we know it's working. I just need to make it look nice. So let's apply some brass casings here. And I need to sort out the cutoffs for when things are full. Well, that's looking a bit better. That's all working. And now we need to actually move on to the last few things we get from clay. And that is going to be terracotta, clay blocks, and red sand. But the first thing we need to do is compact all this into actual blocks of clay. So I guess we'll do that here. But apparently I don't have enough andesite alloys. So we're going to go craft a few bits first. So let's just chuck these in there. And then we can make ourselves a basin. Just chuck that on there. Add a funnel on that side and a press on top. And the first thing I want to do is just split some of that off and put it over in that vault because, well, then we can just store some clay blocks, can't we? In fact, I'm going to do the cooking for the terracotta here, I think. And once again, we'll keep it quite slow. I don't want this thing to be too overpowered. Although in saying that, if I had three running like this, I could still have one mechanical arm just collecting all the cooked terracotta and putting it onto belts. Yeah, maybe that's what we should do. If I have a mechanical arm collecting from there, putting it in there, we'll just hang that upside down. Okay, so that should all work. This will turn it into clay blocks. This will then send three that way, one that way. And then this belt will take just clay. So let's put that there. We need to put a terracotta filter on there so it will only take the cooked stuff. Put a clay filter on there just to make sure. So that one's going to be terracotta. And what I need now is a couple of crushing wheels and a couple of gearboxes. So if we put these here and here, and get those rotated. And then we'll stick a shaft in the middle. We'll stick a wheel either side. Oh, jeez, got a thunderstorm. And then once we get to here, we want red sand going one way. And I think we also get dead bushes. Is that correct? No, we just get red sand. Okay, that's perfect. Although if we wash that red sand, look how much extra gold we can get. Hmm... This is good. It will make the whole gold process a lot quicker. Do we then want to split some of this off and wash it then, in that case? You know what? I think for now, we'll just focus on getting the red sand because we're also obviously going to be able to get red sandstone and smooth red sandstone and all sorts coming off of that. And uh, yeah, that means we're going to need to do some more building upstairs and stuff. So for now, I think... Jeez, okay, right, I really need to sleep. That storm is loud. That's much better. So what I was saying, uh, I think for now, I'm just going to leave it as red sand and we'll figure out where we go from there afterwards because there's other things we can do with the quartz as well. We can make lots of things from the red sand. So yeah, let's not get too carried away. I mean, I do have other things I need to get done today after all. So with that in mind, I think we just need to hook power up to everything here now. And a short while later, I 
think we're done. Everything seems to be working. It's doing its thing. We're getting terracotta now, as well as, of course, the red sand and the clay. I've once again hooked everything up as well, so our big board of stuff over here is looking pretty healthy. Although converting this red sand into gold is probably a good idea, but we'll save that for another day. Because I think we've certainly made a good start over here, but now we need to tackle a whole other problem, and that is moving the resources from these vaults over to these warehouses. And so far in this world, we've used a whole lot of trains. We've even got this set up for trains to come in and drop stuff off. So the obvious thing to do would be to put in a train that collects things and just takes them over here. But I think that's going to look quite messy. So I don't really want to do that. And that means we're going to need to do something completely different. And I know someone who's done just that. Let's go pay them a visit. So my good friend Foxy no -Tail has been doing some pretty awesome stuff with his delivery network in his ski resorts. And I want to go pay him a visit and take a closer look, because we're probably going to do something fairly similar. I'm just sick of building trains that actually look like trains. So when Foxy came to visit me, he had a DeLorean, and he told me that he drove really fast, and then he appeared on this bridge. But I don't believe that for a second. That's just nonsense. Science fiction nonsense. So I've had a little look around, figuring there must be a pathway somewhere, and I've stumbled across this. A doorway. So this is much more likely on how he actually got here. Just a random foxless door. Suspicious. And there's not really much behind it. Just nothing to see here and a deep hole. It's a little bit concerning, but we can't steal all these ideas from here, can we? So I guess we're just going to have to take a leap of faith. Did it work? Ah, oh, it totally worked. Yep, that makes total sense. And conveniently, I have exactly what I need, which is a spyglass, so we can have a look at Foxy's town. But he should have some vehicles going around somewhere here. Oh, there's one. There's a dump truck. Look at it go. That's the kind of thing I want to do, I think. Trains that don't look like trains. Let's see if we can sneak in and take a closer look. Right, so is that being driven by a monkey? Foxy's weird. But this is exactly the kind of thing I wanted to have a look at. Hopefully we can get away without being seen by Foxy here. Yes, yeah, so he's got dump trucks. He's got forklifts. And I believe if we go over to the main town... This isn't great at all. I immediately regret this decision. Okay, I've got a couple of fresh tanks on me now, so I've got plenty to get going on with, and I guess I should probably head back over to that area. What? Um, hang on a minute. Uh, excuse me. Mr. Beardstone? Oh, dang it. Um, hey, I wasn't expecting you. No, 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 I was just, uh, you invited me to your ski village, remember? Uh yeah, I did, but mm -hmm. I didn't expect you to... How did you get here? Oh, it's best we don't go into that. It's all very complicated. Right. I, I noticed you're carrying a spyglass. Oh, oh okay. Oh, but it must probably no, glitch. No, uh, uh, yeah, 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 it must be, it must be. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely not over here stealing your ideas or anything. Oh, well, that's good then. Well, that, well, to be honest with you, I could probably do come back to your place and get some more ideas as well. I've, you see, I've just built the most... Lovely. Actually, it's really nice. The best thing I ever built. You can come and help me open it today if you want. Oh, yeah. yeah that sounds amazing. I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, I, I do have a couple of things I need to look at. Right. I, I could give you a tour. Not a problem. Okay, yeah. If you could do a particular focus on your delivery vehicles. Right. Okay, well, we've just happened to have one's just reversed in here. I'll just uh, stop oh, the driver yeah, disappearing and get an object. No, I'll just, well, we'll just have to oh. follow him, Mr. Beardstone. Look at that. that. See, this is what I wanted to see, Foxy. I'm so sick of building trains. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite frustrating building trains all the time. These, I have to say, even if you have to do the rail underground, these vehicles are much better. Although, be prepared to get millions of comments telling you should have phantom tracks, which means you need a phantom farm and you need phantoms. I'm not, I'm not no, doing I'm that. not doing that either. There is no oh. chance. No chance. It's off again. Oh, yeah, don't, 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 don't get run over. He's... Oh, he's pretty good. He's, uh, he's done it a few times. Pretty good at reversing. Yeah, he's done it a yeah. few times, and he, he's going to go over here into the car park. You see, uh, at the uh, and he, what he'll do now is he's going to grab some items from the um, from the train station through a little hole that I've I forgot to cover up. Don't don't look in that hole. <coughs> what oh, hole? What hole? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. this is awesome because basically I've, I've built an area. It's got lots and lots of trains in it already. And now I'm adding more buildings. I just I don't want to just have a bajillion trains going around no. on top of the the many I already yeah. have. So yeah, I was considering maybe doing like some sort of like fifties vehicles, mm. delivery trucks, and things nice. like that. And um, well, I figured what better place to get inspiration than to come see the guys already done it. 
I mean, the fact that they're being driven by monkeys is mildly terrifying, but apart from that, that I, is awesome. I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing I was after, really. Um, just, yeah, some s something that's not a train. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I mean, I will be doing some boats in future, but I'm still on land at the moment, so, yeah. Boats, boats don't do no, that. No, well, they do, but not ideally. Anyway, uh, speaking no. of things that are not a train, would you like to have a race, Mr. Beardstone? What? Of course I'd love to have a race. Follow me. I'll, I'll walk round rather than fly. Yeah, slowly. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll follow you slowly. Yeah, I, I just happen to have, uh, you know, just on the off chance that someone might ah, might turn up to my world, I, um, I've built a new vehicle and I'm, I'm desperate to race it, you see. Yeah, I can do this. I'll, I'll, wait a second. Are we going to... Come across other trains while we're doing uh, this. Possibly one, but I, I, I may have modified the track slightly to allow us to potentially go round them. So just be careful. Um, okay, there's a train coming up behind oh, me right well, now. We'll be ideal then. Right, on your mask, there you go. Okay. What? Come on, Cybertruck, you got this. Right, so you're always pretty much Jeez. turning left. Oh, wow, this. Okay, I feel like I'm going super yes, fast. Well, these are, these are cars, not trains, with beards, don't. What, what cars do? They go very fast. I see, I see. Yeah. And uh, they've got fuel in, and um, I may have modified this lighting slightly, but there we are. I'm on lap two already. Oh, you're right behind me. Oh, oh. Gee, oh gee, watch out yeah. for that train. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> you didn't go around it, Mr. Beardstone. <laughs> I've got your things here, Mr. Beardstone. Thank you. I have an obituary. Yes. Yeah, that's what happens when you die, you see. Very, very Stay. sad time. But, you know, thank you for taking part in that race. But now it's time to make a very long journey through this tunnel and go and blow. Uh, uh, do, oh, do a grand opening of this new building that I've built that I'm very proud of. I'm Honestly, I think it's the best building I've ever built. So here it is. The, um, what was going to be a power station, which is, uh, well, surplus to requirements. I mean, uh, no, I, I love See, it. I've got, what, it's what? a grand opening. I can't wait for it to be open by Mr. Beardstone himself. I'm so excited. But there's a button there, for, and when you press it, something really special will happen with this building and it will be open for the public to come and see. Mm-hmm. Yep, 100%. Okay, honest. You've literally put honest mate on it. Yes, grand opening honest mate, because I'm a very honest fellow, you see. Right then, let's open it. Whatever you do, don't blow it up. Why would you say something like that? What did I just say? Well, anyway, I think I've um, I think I've got all I need. Stolen all that. Uh, it, I've been inspired. Yep. 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 Hundred percent. To, to basically do exactly the same thing. Um, yeah. Thanks. You're thanks, welcome. Thanks for that inspiration. I've got some of your power station here as well. Do you want to go back? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how are you getting home? How did? Oh, that's a point. How did you get here? Fine. Look, it's, it's, look, it's best not to ask questions, okay? I don't have a DeLorean like you do. I had to find yeah. different methods of, of getting here. Right. And I'll have different methods of leaving as well. Hmm. Okay. Yes. I understand. Mm hmm Yeah. Mr. Oh, do you... Stone. There you go. Look, you can, you can keep that. Oh, thank you. I'll put that on my wall. Well, I'd say that was a reasonably successful trip. We've definitely got some ideas of how we can do things. And yes, rails under the ground instead of phantom rails. Definitely the way we're going to go. I'm not making a phantom farm. And I think if we design some sort of 50s style flatbed delivery truck type things, I think they'll fit in with this area nicely. And we can literally have them pull up at these side bits. We can have them then loop round and drop off in this warehouse here, most likely. Although it might need to go to that one as well. So that means we've got a few things we need to do. We need to make a drop off system. We need to put some roads in. We need to build a vehicle and we need the actual collection system as well. But first things first, we should probably make the vehicle because that's going to kind of dictate everything else we do. And I think I'm going to make that right here so we can ensure that we get it all lined up with these vaults and then we'll figure out how to actually turn it into a train after. I guess it's just going to be attached to bogies on some kind of stilts or something, right? I'm sure it'll be fine. About 20 minutes later and we now have ourselves our first delivery van. I've kept it quite simple, just drawing on the experience from building the city in hardcore. That's loads of vehicles in that. And I do, of course, have a seat and train controls in there as well we can even access the seat which we're going to need to be able to do to put a driver in later and inside here we have our storage interfaces which are at this level here so once we actually move this a couple blocks further away we should be able to get it linked up to the vaults as well and we have storage interfaces pointing that way that way and downwards because well it just gives us lots of options for unloading and loading this thing and i've also stuck it all together hopefully i usually miss something but now the truck is ready we need to attach it to a train and that means we need to go underground 
around. We need to lay some rail around. And hopefully, we should be able to do this fairly straightforward. Although, would I be better off actually just digging out a massive area underground? I could use my drill so it wouldn't take too long. And that's going to make it much easier to sort of tweak and change things, I guess. And then let's just dig out a massive hole underground here. But this could take a while, so I'll see you in a bit. So I've dug a great big hole. I've applied lots of rail, which I think follows the road where it needs to go. I'm not entirely sure. We're about to check that out. And I've attached our delivery truck to a train, moved it over. So we're actually just using glass panes here, so they're invisible. But I assure you, it is attached. And if we go up to the surface here, it's raining. Of course it is. But our delivery truck should be good to go. I just need to check that I've actually mapped out the track correctly. So let's jump in and take it for a spin in the rain. Okay, so it should go round to the right here. Let's slow down a bit as well. In there. Oh, it's a bit tight on that wall. We might need to make that a little bit wider. We should be able to go around this way. It can pull up here and drop off if it needs to. We need to put a path through there. And then we'll have a drop-off point here. That'll probably be the main one. And, oh, there's a train. Which I don't think there's much I'm going to be able to do about that. So occasionally, I guess these things might just kind of go through each other. I think because there are different tracks, yeah, oh, I'm sure it's fine, I'm sure it's fine. I mean, we could probably set up some fancy redstone signaling system, but we'll deal with that if it becomes a problem. But after that, the truck will be able to carry on around this way. It can go down the front of the building. Like so, and then it will come around this side, and it will stop at various stations along here to pick up all the stuff and things. Drive around this way, and do the same thing on this side. So that should work quite well. I just need to add in all of the stations and all of the delivery systems here so it can actually load up on stuff and things. And then set up a drop-off system over that way as well. But sadly, that's all we've got time for today. That's something we'll have to continue with on the next episode. But I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye now.